In the late 1980s, vegetables began to be lightly processed and packaged as fresh convenience foods. Initially, the market was very small, with the Fresh Cut Produce Association estimating that in 1989, sales amounted to only $89 million in the United States. With the subsequent development of pre-packaged salad mixes, baby carrots, celery, and romaine hearts, pre-sliced and diced onions, and a wide range of other products, pre-cut, lightly processed sales boomed and are now in the billions of dollars annually. The following video illustrates the procedures and handling required to produce safe, high-quality, ready-to-eat leafy greens and highlights product packaged in both bags and trays. The video was filmed at Taylor Farms facility in Salinas, California. Taylor Farms is a highly innovative produce company and a major marketer of lightly processed leafy greens to both food service and retail companies. I'm Kelly Mancino. I'm a Cal Poly alumni of uh, 2016. Right now we are at our Taylor Farms receiving facility in Salinas, California. We receive about 10 million pounds of raw product each week. When a truck comes in, it's weighed, it's inspected by our QA department, and then um, it goes further to be unloaded, cooled, and brought into our facility. The truck right here is being weighed. Every truck has to be weighed before we can offload, um, no matter what it is. It's to comply with um, regulations. So once it comes from the scale house, we can bring it over here and have it inspected, then offloaded. So they inspect every, every the, bin? For every it. bin for quality, for the product commodity type, to ensure we're receiving what the harvesters say that we're receiving. We're just double checking everything is correct before we offload it and bring it in. Once something leaves the truck, it's a lot harder to reject an item um, due to quality or the wrong commodity. So if we do this prior to uh, the truck being fully offloaded, we're a lot more successful. So before we go into the plant, we have to make sure where we wash our hands, put hair nets, our bump caps, once you do that, um, we come over to our um, housekeepers over here. Um, you grab white gloves to keep your hands a little bit warm because it is uh, 36 degrees inside our plant, so it's a little chilly. Once you have your white gloves on, you smock up, and then the very last thing you do is put your um, latex gloves on. So this just helps prevent um, bringing anything into the plant. Once you do that, um, we walk through a foot bath, which will kill all of the bacteria, germs, etc., on your shoes, and so we don't track that into the plant. So as we're walking through the plant, you will see um, foot baths and um, sanitation stations so that we can continue to bring that safety into the plant. At the different locations that have sanitation, um, you will see like a Purell sort of um, hand wash. And so before we go into the plant right here, even though our gloves are sterile and brand new, we will um, spray our hands, wipe them together, as well as wash our boots before we go through. Every section of the plant, um, it'll make more sense as we go on our tour. There's um, another hand wash station. And so before we cross into the next uh, level of the plant, we will want to uh, get our hands nice and clean again. So once the product is um, brought in from the cooling, Station, we bring it into our raw product room. So once the truck's received, it's inspected, cooled, then brought into our plant. So right now we are standing, it's very busy, but we're standing in the raw product room. Um, so right now we're looking at conventional product. This tag tells you the, um, the scale the item of what the commodity is, who the grower is, the ranch location lot, our identification codes, and the harvester crew, as well as the time of day that it was harvested, the date, and um, the origin. So when we transition to the Yuma season, sometimes we have uh, product of Mexico. We don't always have that. It's usually just during the busy, busy months. Our bin labels have different colors for each day. Um, we also have different color uh, tape that goes around the bin for each day. Um, as you can see, scanning over here, um, you have a yellow tag, so that was for one particular day. This is uh, Tuesdays and 
is yellow, Wednesdays is red, and we continue down the colored chain for the days of the week. Each of our bins, whether it's a plastic tote or a fiber bin, it is always lined with a plastic liner to prevent contamination and just help with our food safety. We are really, really proud of our food safety and we take it really seriously. So everything is lined. Uh, we also flush our product with nitrogen <laughs> to help it from aging and browning. It just keeps it fresh. So the liner also helps keeping that inside and just helps with the overall quality of the raw product. Each bin of lettuce is mechanically dumped into a hopper, which feeds the lettuce onto a conveyor, which brings it into the plant for processing. In some instances, product is harvested into totes, and in contrast to the bins, these are hand dumped within the plant itself. So this here is our organic wine. Um, our totes are yellow, as I said earlier. We try to keep a, a color distinguished section. Um, we start our production shifts with organic every single um, time we run and we end with conventional so that we don't, um, don't have a cross contamination of any sort. So right now it looks like we're running a mix, um, a spring mix. We try to mix up the commodities so you don't have all spinach at one time and so that you get that mix started before you get to the wash station. As the product is dumped on our conveyor belt, it goes through a shaking process to kind of level it out and then up the conveyor belt. Once it goes up the conveyor belt and down, we have a foreign object sensor. So what it is is it's a laser. And if it notices um, metal, so it's, it has metal detection. If it notices metal um, defected product, so what, how it does that is it looks for chlorophyll and if it doesn't see it, it kicks it out and rejects it. So as we go through, you can actually see the process take place. This just helps with foreign objects, not, um, not having pieces of metal, glass, uh, plastic end up in your finished product. So what this is, is our wash station. Once the product goes through the conveyor belt, it drops down into a chlorine-based water with an additive of Smart Wash Solution. So what Smart Wash does is it finds a sole piece that is contaminated with either E. coli or salmonella. So instead of cross-contaminating all the product that is in with that one little piece that is contaminated, the Smart Wash Solution targets that to stop cross-contamination of the entire process. So back in the early 2000s when we had the E. coli outbreak, that's when we developed the Smart Wash Solution. The Smart Wash Solution is available to everyone industry-wide, yet even our competitors, it's to, uh, that's how much we care about food safety here. We developed it, but yet we are bringing it to everyone so that we can really watch and help control those uh, potential outbreaks. So I, I find it very interesting. We also have an organic approved Smart Wash solution so that we can use it in all of our products. So once our product is washed, it comes into our spin dryers, which they spin for about, uh, about a minute to help get access water off. These are our larger spin dryers. Everything is automated because they are so big. So if you can see um, right here, the guys are bringing them across, dropping them inside the spin dryer. These spin dryers go for about two minutes before uh, the product is taken out and brought to the next step of our packaging finished goods section. All of our product is weighed before it um, drops down into our tray or our bag. On this side that we're currently looking at, these are all tray items. As you see the doors opening, that's because the, the gasket has gotten to a certain weight. All of those gaskets, once they hit, for example, if we're running a one pound tray, if there's four baskets that equal a pound, all of that drops in, and then it's weighed an additional time before it drops into the tray itself. So here we're at our chopped salad line. 
As you can see, we have an employee placing dressing packets on a conveyor belt. With that, a, um, a dressing packet shoots down the spout and into our bag salad. A couple of years ago, we had about six individuals up here placing those dressing packets individually into those lines. Now we're able to use this conveyor belt, which helps us with our efficiency. We're a lot faster. We're able to get more bags with more accuracy with the dressing packet. If a, a dressing packet is missed on a bag salad, we now have these QR codes on the dressing packet itself. And if a bag that's missing that dressing packet will be kicked out due to the sensors. Here at Taylor, we run about 50% private label and 50% Taylor label. This is our box making room. Once we have finished products, you need boxes to ship it out in. So uh, we have implemented a few machines that help create our boxes. Instead of having individuals doing this by hand, we now have these awesome machines to do it for us. It speeds up, it speeds up our processing time and helps create more boxes. These machines definitely help us with our efficiency. We call this our denester. And what it does is it, it brings down your trays. Again, we used to have three employees on each side bringing trays down so that we can run through the conveyor belt to have the product placed. And what this does is it helps the process, moves the process along, brings the trays down, and then um, as we move through this line, you'll be able to see the product dropping down from upstairs into those trays. These arms here push product down so that when the tray top is placed, we won't have product in the seal. We also have a lid denester, which places a lid onto the tray once the product has been packed down. To seal those, we use a sonic welder that keeps the tray together and helps it from opening up while it's being packed. This is our automated labeler. We have top and bottom labels on all of our products. On the top label, we have also developed a QR code to match the UPC code to the bottom of our tray. If the UPC code does not match the QR code, then our machines will kick that product down because there is a mishap. There is a mislabel somewhere and we need to fix it before we continue to label all of the product on the line. So this is our tray robot. What it does is, is it senses where the trays are located on the conveyor belt based off of the label color. The label color will tell the robot the location of that tray and pack the tray into the box. The robots know the, how many trays will fit in the box. So once it's hit that number, it continues down the line. So the way that our boxes are sealed is with a hot glue, which is basically a high powered glue gun type of glue to keep those boxes from opening up as they're being transported. So this right here that we're looking at is film. We run about 600 different SKUs, 50% being Taylor label, 50% being private label. We have to let the film get to um, the, the temperature of the plant again, which is 38 degrees. This way the film will run correctly, it'll seal correctly, and we won't have any uh, bags opening up. Right now we're standing in our shipping warehouse. We have 18 dock doors. It takes anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours to get a truck fully loaded. Our product is first in, first out, same as our raw product. Um, anything that has been here longer than 24 hours is very uh, low. We try to get everything in and out as quick as possible. Our shipping warehouse is sorted by product type so that when the sales orders come through from our sales team, our shipping department can tell our loaders, hey, this truck needs six, uh, six pieces of this item. So all the loaders know exactly where to go, pick that product, create the pallet, 
it and load it onto the truck so that they can get out as quick as possible. So the temperature inside of the loading dock is uh, 36 degrees. So we go, we just have a, a few variation. It's usually due to the doors being open and closed. That's where the heat, quote unquote, comes in. Of course, it's still very cold in here. It keeps all of our products fresh and ready to go. The trailers themselves are also cooled so that when they come to the dock, we can just have the same temperature so that we don't have any temperature ranges to keep our product as fresh as possible. As was seen, production of the value-added leafy greens requires great attention to detail, a high level of oversight, and a high level of investment. The process begins in the field where only clean and high-quality product is harvested. At the processing plant, the product is cooled, triple washed, weighed and packaged before being placed into pre-cooled trucks. At all stages, care is taken to ensure that microbial cross-contamination doesn't occur, nor that foreign objects are included in the final product. To minimize costs and to reduce worker fatigue, automation and robotics are being increasingly utilized, which should help keep costs down. With appropriate oversight and care, pre-packaged, ready-to-eat leafy greens will continue to be a major source of sales to the ag industry and a major source of safe, convenient food to consumers.